So to texture paint in Blender, we hit T to bring up our tools, and we select the texture paint button, and that's it. You're painting. We can do this for any object. So if I select this button to go back into object mode, and tap X to delete, shift A, and say I add a monkey head, and tap W to give it some smoothing, tap W again to increase the subdivision levels, S to scale. It has no materials, no textures, no UV maps, nothing. All we do is select the object, select the texture paint button, and that's it. You're painting. Now, there's a lot of interesting stuff we can do, so I'd like to get into that a little bit. Let's go ahead and hit our full screen button here. Let's click the X to delete this layer we just did. So the first thing I want to go over, you can change the size of your texture layer whenever you want. Down here, if I just drag this all the way down, you see it goes to 128. The new layer size increments and decrements in chunks of 128, which is good because this allows us to increase and decrease the size of our layer. You can go all the way as far down as 128, which would be extremely small. So if I were to click Add Color here, very super pixelated layer, which is also giving us some artifacting here. Uh, if we delete that, we could go up and make one around the uh, 4,000 level. Of course, the bigger you make these layers, the more resources that's going to eat up. So if I click Add Color there, you'll see it stalls for a second because it's generating this really large image. On the other side, the quality is uh, super good here. So we'll delete that and let's compromise here at about 2048. I'll click Add Color. And I can tap X to increase or decrease the size of my brush. Of course, Shift X to increase or decrease the pressure strength. And Blender 2.71 has added some really cool functionality here in that I can go all the way up to 1 and uh, have this cool visual representation of exactly how strong or light the pressure is, which is cool. If I hold shift using zero brush, we have an eraser. So you see we can hold shift and we erase, we let go, and we have our regular pin back. We can add bump layers, which are basically layers with normal mapping. So if I click that, and that, of course, creates a 2048 by 2048 size bump layer there. We can start drawing there. The bump layers are normal mapping layers are really layers that where the resolution makes a really big difference. So if I were to bring the resolution really low and add another bump layer there, look how bad that looks. Or even if I brought that up to just like, say, 512, add a bump layer there pretty nasty looking. So the higher resolution we make the bump layers, the better they will look. Okay, so over in our zero brush menu here, we have two options. We can either load a single brush or a folder of brushes, which is represented by brushes. So let's just load a single brush this time. I'll click brush. And you'll see the standard file menu pops up here. I already have in my library under utilities, I have a brushes folder. I have saved to my bookmarks and you would just click add to do that. So I'm going to click on brushes here. And under brushes I have a folder here called seamless 124 by 124 and these are seamless textures that I've collected in various places off the internet and you can download this folder of sample brushes in the description of this video. What we'll do is just select one of these, say this dry mud here. And what happens when using zero brush is selecting the texture loads that texture as its own brush. So we don't have to fool with going down to texture here and setting all that business up. Hit X to increase the size of that. And we see it going all over the place here. So we have some options over here, layer opacity, we also have bumpiness, which controls the normal mapping factor, which we can immediately add to any of our layers. So we can do it like this, and we could decrease the opacity all the way down if we wanted. Or I can select this, hit zero. Or I could just add an actual bump layer, click add bump, 
and there we have a pretty decent looking bump layer there. And we can control its bumpiness to bring that down a bit. We can actually select it and enter a value if we want 0 0.1. There we go, nice. So we can do that like that. And we could click here to load another brush, or we could just select brushes and load this entire folder, but that gets a bit messy. So I'll select this carpet texture here. And as you can see, I'm still on my bump layer, so it's just doing the normal mapping of it. Or we could select back on color, draw it on here, or we could add another color layer. And do it on here. Go ahead and delete these bump layers. The layer opacity becomes essential in us being able to mix and merge these different textures we're working with. We can also change the blending mode here to screen or multiply or it could be anything we wanted. And we'll go back here, bring that layer opacity up. Let's click on brush again and I'm going to load this cool industrial looking texture here. If I started just drawing on here, I could texture this all like this. But if I wanted to quickly be able to paint through the whole thing just to get like a base layer going of it. I can select this button here which allows me to paint through. I have to be careful sometimes the shift button gets stuck there. And so I could hit X to increase the size of my texture. And of course the larger it is the it's gonna lag a little bit. Say I wanted to be able to quickly lay down a base layer here. So I wanted my brush to be real big but I still want the texture to go on there smaller. What I can do is click over here and decrease the scale of the texture and you see now I still have this big surface of it but it's going on there small. One important thing to notice when you're working with seamless textures so long as you don't move around your object, rotate or, or zoom in or zoom out or anything like that, you can let go of your tablet or mouse and then start drawing down again and it will still, the seamless texture will still work together. Now as soon as you move or rotate, you know, that's gone, it's going to be uh, starting on a new tier there. Using the paint through option, we were able to kind of lay down this base layer here and then we could turn that off, decrease the size of our brush, maybe increase this scale of the texture a little bit, and just, you know, work around here, fill in some of the areas where it kind of looks stretched out from us just laying down that generic layer there. And then we have this button which disables shading. So this is good so we can see when we need to adjust underneath or in a, some kind of area that we can't see well because of the material. We can turn that on and off. And then over here we have the option to turn off this material's receiving shadows. Sometimes the shadows can look a bit pixelated so we have the option to turn that off and on. And finally over here we have a button which generates us a new UV map. If I were to hit tab, go into edit mode, and say I shift select a couple of these faces here, and hit E to extrude, E to extrude again, S to scale, and say I've got this kind of weird aberration on this monkey head here. If I jump back into texture paint mode, and I'll tap space to bring up my uh, brush selection menu, just because it's lazier than going all the way over to the other side of the screen, and I'll select my draw brush. If I start trying to paint on here where I extruded this out, it does not look good because the UV map is now dis uh, distorted. What we can do is hit this button which will reset the UV map and generate a new one. Now this is good and bad. 
it's good because as soon as I click it, we now have an object that properly receives our brush strokes. It's bad, obviously, because it messes up any of our previous layers. So in the future, I would like to be able to merge these technologies to where you don't even need a, a reset button. But for now, we can just quickly generate a new UV map, one that doesn't look distorted. And as you can see, the resolution is already looking a bit lower now because we have, we're covering more area here. So this one 1024 by 1024 map is trying to cover more area. So we might delete that, increase the resolution up to 2048, add color, and now it's looking a lot better, a lot smoother. I'm going to, instead of deleting this layer, I'm just going to go ahead and hide it and create a new one for us to work on. And so we have this option over here where it says tiled. This is how we change the application of the texture on the brush. So when it's tiled, so long as we don't rotate or move our view, we can start painting on our object, especially when you're using a seamless texture. You can draw, you can let go of your pen and pick up drawing again, and the pattern will be consistent. And so this is how Zero Brush handles textures by default. The other one that I use most commonly besides Tiled is Stencil. Select Stencil, what it will do is bring up an overlay of the texture, and then basically we brush it on. What's on that stencil gets put onto our object, which is very good. So we'll move that, and we've got that just painted straight onto there, which is dope. And you'll notice this little uh, circle icon by Guts. We'll see that the names of these brushes are like Carpet Fabric Yellow, Dry Mud, and Guts. Instead of like Guts X1000 dash and all this kind of stuff, I created a brush name modifier that gets rid of a lot of common junk you find when you download images. The idea being that you're able to go on Google Image Search or some other site, download all kind of images you want to use, and when you load them into Blender, they'll have nice, clean names. What the little circle is for is I didn't want the zero brush brushes that you load to affect the placement of Blender's internal brushes, such as the clone, draw, smear, or soften. And so this works also in sculpt mode as well, where there's actually quite a lot of brushes. And this way, your, your default brushes will always be in the same location. They won't get mixed around with the new brushes. All right, so let's go ahead and go over all the available layer options here. So color, we've been using that a lot. So a color layer is basically just a regular layer. We can paint on, change the colors of our brushes, or just use, you know, standard draw, draw brush, or clone. We could... Alt, double tap over here, and then I could start cloning wherever my 3D cursor is. The color layer is, you know, just a basic paint layer, and then the bump adds normal mapping. We went over that, so if I were to click add bump here and start drawing, if I select the dry mud, I'll start drawing there, decrease this down a bit, and so we're drawing onto our normal mapping here, which looks really awesome. The difference between this specular layer adding button and any other specular layer button I've seen on any other Blender add-on is that this one works. Because what happens when I click this, this layer communicates with this material to make sure all the settings are correct to actually receive the specular layer. So you see as soon as we do that, the specularity of the whole object gets zapped, which is what we need for this to work. I can actually paint on with textures specular layers. So it almost kind of creates this kind of ghostly effect here. What this specular layer does is it's only going to show us the areas we painted on that are being affected by the light. So if I were to switch this over to draw, and which is on white, and see, now we're just adding the standard kind of white specular there, which you can see coming up. I can hold shift with that also to use my eraser and put that on there. A specular layer is just going to show us wherever the light is actually hitting this. Part of this is painting it on there, and the other part is considering 
where the actual light is actually focusing on our object. So if I were to click my button here to zoom out, and I were to select my scene light and turn its visibility on so I can actually grab it. Got that there, hit G to grab. I start rotating it. You see that the light is now moving around my monkey object there. So it kind of works twofold. It's where's the light actually shining and then what is actually on the map. But in any case, we now actually have specular layers that work, which is good. So if I select Add Transparent, you'll see that the object appears to disappear. But actually, what we have now is an object we can paint on. And so anywhere we paint on this object, we'll be able to see now. And if I were to select the Paint Through button, whatever I paint will also paint through the other side also. So I can actually delete that, click Add Transparent, tap X to decrease the size of my brush, and with this paint through on, do one kind of ninja strike like that, and as soon as we rotate, we see it going all the way around. So this is a kind of fun thing to do. Whoa! Whenever you delete a transparency layer or a specular layer, it will restore all the settings that your material needs to function properly. So if I select Alpha Mask, it appears to have done nothing. But what actually is happening now is that we can paint a mask over anywhere in our object. And you see because I have Paint Through selected, when I paint it straight through there, you'll see it, it's like it as though it cuts straight through the monkey here. And so I can make slashes through here and a slash through here and do this, which is cool. So down here at the bottom, we have the Save My Layers button. This is great because it will save all of the images that you've edited, all of your layers, and not just for the current object that you're painting on, but for all objects in your entire scene. So say I hop over to object mode and I tap Shift A and I add a plane here and S to scale it some. And then I click back on texture paint mode. And of course, as soon as I do that, I now have a instant layer generated for my plane here. So if I were to click save my layers, this will save all of the uh, edits and changes done to my images. And then when I go to file and to save my file, it will all be stored inside there. When you switch modes in Zero Brush, it will automatically save your layers also. This helps minimize bugs and things that pop up since what I'm using here are generated images. You can actually switch between the objects you're painting on just by holding down Alt and then selecting another object. And if both objects happen to be texture paint mode, then you can just quickly tap Alt and paint on one object uh, to another. So this is great for uh, designing your scenes and whatever you want to do there. And then of course, when you're ready to call it a day, just click Save My Layers. That's extra assurance that everything is indeed saved. And when you go to save your Blender file and you open it back up, you won't see blank black images on your objects, but the actual uh, images that you painted. Hope you enjoyed this video and I hope make a lot of cool stuff with Blender and Zero Brush.